Hey guys, Sam here and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I am starting a new mini series of me eating different Asian foods and cooking specific Asian foods for a day. Today I am starting off with Japanese food. So it is about 9 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to be having some breakfast and I'm deciding to have a nice healthy, fun, simple breakfast. So today I will be doing a rolled omelette with some miso soup. So the miso soup is not going to be homemade and stuff like that. I have some packages, but I will be making the omelette by myself, homemade, and I even have that little like omelette pan. So I'm very excited to show you guys how I do it. Okay, let's go! Okay guys, so we're starting off with making the base for the omelette. So here I am just cracking a few eggs because we can't make an omelette without eggs. So, me trying to gracefully without getting any shells into the measuring cup. And now we're adding some milk and some seasoning, salt and pepper, just simple. But always adding milk into your eggs always makes them extra fluffy. So here I'm just going to whisk, 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 whisk. Everyone says I'm very aggressive when I whisk, but not the point here. <laughs> so now we're going to be adding our little vegetables to the omelette. So here I'm just adding some green onions or scallions, cutting up some bell peppers. And oh, look, there's a little baby pepper inside the pepper. How cute. So now just getting rid of all the other stuff, all the gunk on the inside. And yes, I already washed the vegetables. Don't worry. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Munch. Little snack in between. So once I'm done with all the veggies, I'm going to just plop them in to the egg mixture. So it's going to mix and combine all together. So there's my little pan. Isn't that so cute? It's literally made to make like rolled omelets. It's adorable. And it came with that cute little like spatula. How adorable is that? So I have done this a few times. So it's a little tricky in the beginning, but sooner or later you get used to it afterwards. You get to like the flow of how things are going and stuff. So this is what you do, you pour a small little bit of mixture into it and you let it cook and then you start trying to flip it over and roll it and bring it down and you add a small amount of eggs each time. I added a little too much each time so my eggs were like really thick and stuff when it wasn't supposed to be that thick. But yep, you just keep rolling it, letting it cook and it's really fun to make. It's a little bit on the messier side. So, as I said for the miso soup, I'm not making my own, so I have some instant that I usually get from my Asian supermarket. They are super, super good, and they come in multiple different, like, I guess you can say flavors and stuff. This one doesn't happen to come with tofu. I usually do like it, but my parents bought one without me knowing. But it still tastes just as good. So that's what it looks like on the inside. You see like the miso powder, some vegetables, and those little circle white things. I still don't know what those are. <laughs> I guess I'll never know. Okay, so here I have my miso soup. I have my omelette on some rice and to be more authentic I decided to have some chopsticks with me and because I love matcha and matcha is a huge thing that came from Japan I know it's not authentic authentic but I decided to make myself an iced matcha tea latte because we love those those are so good so I'm gonna start off with the miso soup right here so it comes with like little, not like tofu bits, but something else. I don't know what it is. Seaweed, um, the miso paste. Mmm. That is really good. Like, there's a little bit of like a salty taste. It is quite flavorful. Mmm. I don't know what these, they're like these little white soft round things. I don't know what they are, but they're so good. So now, to go into my omelet, I'm just gonna... Cut slice, cut slice, cut slice. Poor thing, I just bought like kachowed it. But here we got a piece right here. Oh, pepper. Right here. We're gonna give it a taste. Mmm. The eggs are nice and fluffy. Mmm. Really good. And then we got some white rice. 
if you guys are wondering, I am half Chinese. I more so grew up with my Chinese family, so yes, I know how to eat with chopsticks, especially rice. Mmm. But yeah, this tastes really good. I'm gonna tell you guys now, I have no idea how authentic this is, but I do know that rolled omelets, miso soup, and matcha are very well-known, popular dish, like foods in Japan. So, yeah. But overall, this meal is very filling, very healthy, like it has all the food groups. Well, except dairy. No, nope, dairy, no, there's egg. Um, sorry, not egg, there's milk in the eggs. So, dairy. We literally have all our four food groups. I could totally see me having this as a breakfast like a few times a week. Cause like it's super healthy, it's super filling. You get all your nutrition, like nutrients in, in one meal. Hey everyone, it is now about 2.30. Um, I changed outfits because I went to take a shower because I just finished out a workout. If you guys have ever done Just Dance, you guys know that is an actual workout, like holy, like if you do it properly. So I'm gonna go have lunch now. I'm deciding that I'm going to make omurice. Basically, omurice is Japanese rice dish with chicken and an egg on top. It's kind of like an omelet, but inside it's filled with like rice and chicken and then based with the rice is based in like ketchup, which is really interesting. I've made it before, so I'm gonna make it again and show you guys how I do it. I love making omurice. So, off for lunch time! So I didn't actually have any chicken with me, like chicken breast or whatnot. That's what they like originally use in omurice. So I just used some chicken burgers that I had and stuff. Gives it a little extra crunch. So now I'm just cutting up into small bits and I was struggling here because the chicken was so hot. I have really sensitive hands and stuff. So it was a struggle for me to cut this. So I'm going to take leftover rice that I had cooked from beforehand. So now I'm going to mix that rice with some ketchup and soy sauce and some seasoning like salt and pepper. You add the chicken into it, mix it so it cooks all together. Add it onto a plate, just like I did. I made way too much. And now here I am with the egg. So now I'm just gonna make like a simple kind of like flat egg. There's like multiple different ways you can do this. You can put like the rice and stuff inside the egg and fold it like an omelet, or you can do what I'm doing and just putting the egg right on top of the rice instead. Man, I was really struggling here. Rip the egg. <laughs> okay guys, so as you guys saw, if you're looking on top right now, that is ketchup. So what they do is, they make the rice and the chicken and stuff like that. I'm supposed to use chicken breast, but like I don't have chicken breast, so I used what I had. Um, and I put the egg on top and everything. It's not as pretty as it's supposed to be, but like I tried. And it doesn't take too, too long. If you know, and if you like cooking, you know what to do. It's, it's like sweet, tangy, savory, all at once. Really, really good. It's a nice, very filling meal with a lot of flavor. I highly suggest people try this. It's really good. Like, if I didn't get into like anime and stuff, I probably wouldn't know what this is. Because like, in animes, they show you like what they make and all anime food looks always so freaking good if they know what they're doing. <laughs> so, like usually the weird thing is, I hate ketchup with eggs, but this, it just totally changes it. It's like, I don't know, just something about it says it's okay to have ketchup on eggs, you know? This is the only time I will actually eat ketchup with eggs. <laughs> I think I made too much, but it's okay. I worked out. It's okay. Hello, my Japanese food enthusiast. Welcome back. It is now about 5.38ish. I'm going to start making dinner. Yes, I made lunch at like 2.30, but my parents won't be getting home until like 6.37, and some things are going to take a little while to cook. For today's dinner, I was assigned to do something that everyone knows of, ramen. But I'm going to do a little twist on it. Instead of using ramen noodles, I'll be using soba noodles instead. So soba noodles are a buckwheat, I think, noodle, so they're like brown colored instead. 
So yeah, this is gonna be fun. I'm gonna be using some like pork belly and stuff for like some meats and everything. So it's gonna be very exciting, very excited. Okay, let's go. So here I am just cutting up the pork belly into small little chunks. My family and I usually either fry this or bake it and since I have acid reflux it's been kind of acting up a bit and plus less for me to focus on I decided to bake it instead and when you cook it over a certain time it gets really like buttery and like just melts in your mouth it is so good. If you guys don't know what pork belly is it's just literally the stomach of a pig <laughs> that's why it's called pork belly and stuff. Um, it's known in a lot of like Asian cuisines so yeah. Time to cook that up, and now I'm just cutting up some veggies. I usually like to try to get in some sort of veggies for the soup broth. So here's me cutting up some zucchinis and now washing some bok choy. If you don't know what bok choy is, it's kind of like a Chinese leafy green. And so now it's time to fry them all up. I'm gonna do like a quick little veggie stir fry to put on top of like the noodles for like the ramen and stuff. So now I'm just going to fry them until they get kind of soft and stuff. Me cooking them all up, adding some salty, but a little bit of flavor. And those are the soba noodles. So if you can tell, they're like straight, they're all individual, and it's like a light brown color. But once they like boil and stuff, you can tell it's like a nice dark brown color, like from the buckwheat. See, there they are. See, look, they look a lot darker. I think it's because of how bright my lights are in the kitchen. You can't tell as much, but they are pretty like dark brown color in person. So for the broth, I decided to find some pork ramen broth. I just thought that fit very well, especially if we're going to be using pork belly as like the meat. So I just got a whole bunch of that broth since I'll be sharing between three people. Had to make sure I got enough broth for everyone. I don't know about you, but I like having a lot of broth and then being able to like drink the soup afterwards. Hey guys, it is now dinner time and this took a lot longer than I expected. I mean, the noodles took about like five-ish minutes, the soup base took a while, the pork belly took about like 15-20 minutes, but overall it looks really good. It smells great. And yeah, okay, let's try some nudes. Delicious as usual. I love how it doesn't have that like stereo like the stereotypical like ramen taste. It's really like different and unique, but it's also a really fun taste. Mm -hmm. Bok choy, amazing as usual. And let's try the pork belly. May or may not have eaten some off camera. Mmm. Nice and chewy. Delicious. Let's get a piece of zucchini. Mm. Very good, very good. But I hope you guys had an awesome time watching this video. I hope you learned some new foods that you could make or even try when you go to Japan and whatnot because these foods all taste so delicious and they're not hard to make either. So if you if you are like like sticking to the book and recipes, you can probably find one online like that. So yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Okay guys, until next time. Bye!